So I've spoken about getting out and testing out new gear and control scenarios. And friends, that's what this video is all about. You see, this winter, I plan to be heading out during crummy weather in a number of tents. And a few of these tents are new. And so every new piece of gear needs to be tested and I need to shake out any possible bugs. Incidentally, many of you have been asking when I'm going to do a review of my Gladiator. That is coming here in a handful of weeks, so stay tuned on that. Now in a moment here, I'm gonna share with you a list of items that I'm gonna be testing out during this trip here. But one of the big ones that you're gonna be seeing me take out momentarily here, well, there we go, there's the list of everything that we're testing here. But the Sonmez London 360 Discover Tent. This hands down is the big item of the bunch here that we are testing out here today. Uh, this is, I would say the Ferrari. You guys know me, I'm a car guy, so of course I gotta lead with car analogies. This is what I would think is the Ferrari of inflatable tents. Uh, and the moment you take this thing out of the package here, which is what you're gonna see me do here in a moment, it is clear very fast because it is a higher premium cost in terms of a tent, but you realize really fast where your money's going. The material that this company uses, uh, the craftsmanship and just how it's put together is unlike any other inflatable tent that I have tested to date. Now I will point out this here, this thing is not light. The, that, that material that I spoke about, that high quality material that I spoke about a moment ago, it comes at a heavy cost, no pun, in, or pun intended rather. This tent is like 126 pounds. I'll put it on the screen. I think it's like 126 pounds or so. so it's a, it's a, it's a chunky one. Now here's one of the things that I really like about this tent right off the get go. Many uh, or tents that I've tested in the past, you know, is the moment you take the tent out of the bag, it is like good luck getting it back in there. Now there's one company, RBM Outdoors, they do a very good job with their, their uh, tent bags, tons of room. But what's different about this one here, notice how I'm folding this together. It's like an origami, like fold up thing. So even if you are, Slamming this thing together, putting it away pretty fast. Yeah, hey, you have a lot of extra room to fit that thing in there. So I really like that. Now, of course, we have all the the uh, uh, details or highlights about this thing. And as I'm gibbering or going through this video here, you're going to see these highlights being posted up on the page itself. Now I will add on to this here. The one thing that I notice here, oh, that's right, I put a, I put a reminder here already. The, the dirt there, of course, sticks to everything. And this tent, I absolutely love this yellow and the dirt sticks to that. So now fortunately, these tents are relatively easy uh, to clean. You just kind of hose them off as if you would hose off your car. Pulling out the goal zero 1500X is going to be powering the electric pump that I'm going to pull out here in a moment. Now, one thing I do want to point out, and I do put the little note on the bottom here, a tent like this doesn't come with a pump. So make sure, and this is what I was talking about in the beginning, new gear, get out there and test it. Make sure you work out any sort of weak links. Imagine going out there and th assuming that there was a pump with this. Yeah, that would be a big bummer. Getting out in location, this case right here, I'm uh, a solid two and a half hours into the sticks. That would be, that, that, that would suck if I went out there with no pump. So I actually went out there with a manual pump and I also went out with an electric pump as well. And what I'll do is I'll put a link down below to those pumps. Now, 
it's worth noting here that I did have, they say you can inflate this tent in about five minutes. It took me seven minutes. The reason being is I was getting used to, they had this, uh, this smart uh, valve there and oh, I wasn't so smart and I accidentally deflated the tent and had to reinflate it. And I could have inflated it a little bit further. So you want to inflate this to seven PSI, which I didn't hear. Now, right above me to the left there, you'll see there's two um, black, black lines there, and that's Velcro. So the cool thing is there's actually a projector screen that you can put on the side of this tent here, which I don't set up during this video here because I don't have a projector at this point. But I just it's worth noting that these people thought of everything. So there's Velcro on the top and there's Velcro on the bottom, and you can put, as you can see right there, uh, you can put the uh, screen right up on the on the uh, right hand side and then over on the left hand side of me is where the stove jack is look at all that light coming in now it's worth noting here it's the sun has already gone down and look at i mean wait till you see as soon as i pull off this next top right here look at how much light just comes into this thing bam Now, another thing I, I want to point out as I'm rolling up the uh, the, the curtain here uh, over the window, or above the window, rather, the screen inside. Earlier, I spoke about the material that they use in this tent. It's just really super high quality, and it's very heavy. Uh, the screens on this tent here, man, it is... I've never seen a tent, and this is no exaggeration, I've never seen a tent with such heavy-duty, hardcore screen that you have on both, actually on all the windows and the doors here. Now, one thing I do want to point out, many of the tents that I go out and test, they have, you can pick up additional floor mats that have a little bit of uh, insulation properties to them. This tent, they, I didn't see them offering it on their page. So what you're seeing here, this is, it's funny, this is a uh, old rug that was underneath my dining room uh, that I decided to uh, take out. And what's funny about this here is one night out there, and again, there's no grass, it's, it's just that nasty fine dirt out there. One night of camping out there realizing I need a dark uh, rug for future using inside this tent because it started getting rubby and really showing it. Now here's something I'm pretty excited about. This is a new cot. Uh, this is a bare main easy cot, a single cot. Uh, I use a King Camp for the dual that goes with my uh, X-Speed Mega Man. I didn't think where I was going with this, which is a dual uh, cot that I use. Now this one right here is a single because as you're gonna find out here in a moment, one of the other items that I'm testing out for the first time here is the Hest Foamy Wide Mattress. So, like anything, I wanted to prevent any weak links. I want to make sure I got a good cot so therefore the Hess mattress could shine properly. And man, as you're going to find out here momentarily, that thing absolutely, both of these working together crushed it. Now this is a, speaking of King Camp, this is one of their tables. I've had this for a number of years, three or four years. Well, it's funny, this is actually the second one that I had. Uh, the first one, my parents liked it so much, um, I gave it to them and I went out and bought another one of these. And it goes up pretty quick, it's lightweight, and it's the perfect height.
When I'm indoors, this is my preferred table of choice. And when I'm outdoors, I have my tailgate or tire table that's usually strapped onto my truck or my trailer, which is my preferred outdoor table. Now here is a new, here's another big one as well. The Lion Safari and the Expansion Pack. This thing is an absolute beast. Now, in a moment here, you're gonna see me plugging in the Starlink, which is the heaviest lifting piece of uh, gear that I have out in the field. And usually when I run it with a lot of the battery packs and so forth, uh, I'm usually down under 25% or under 40, you know, 30% after a, a good a weekend out camping and so forth. This evening here, I get down to 77% after having all sorts of stuff plugged in here. So this thing is an absolute beast. And what excites me about this battery uh, system here is when you look at, a few months back I was talking about, we're seeing a lot more portable air conditioners coming to the market. You have Zero Breeze, which incidentally just came out with their Mark III. Uh, you have EcoFlow with their Wave Two. Both of these, when you, have a, when you have a power management system like this or a battery system like this, on the forest, you can legitimately go for lo much longer periods of time, especially when you factor in the, the solar panels that you can get with these things as well. This one, you can plug in up to 600 watts of solar into that thing. So again, allows you to stay out there for longer periods of time. And in this case, run air conditioning in your tent out in the middle of nowhere. Pretty awesome. Yeah, that is a understatement. I'm waiting for Starlink to come out, although I think they just came out with a DC version. I thought I read some I thought I read someplace that they finally came out with the ability for the Starlink to run on DC only. The fact that you have to run it into AC makes it so inefficient. Now in a moment you're gonna see me go hiking up that rock there, which I'm I telling you that's a big ass rock right there but i'm not going to talk about the rock or the starlink right here what i do want to point out here is a reminder to people because as i'm walking up there i'm seeing toilet paper and rubbish all around this rock right here this is one of my favorite camping spots and over the last three years i've definitely noticed a lot more rubbish a lot more garbage a lot more toilet paper people don't even dispose of their own crap uh, you know it, this, I find it very bothersome because we're seeing a lot more of these amazing, beautiful camping spots just absolutely destroyed by people going out there and not picking up after themselves. Look at Alabama Hills last year. A lot of the camping spots uh, were shut down uh, because of people just abusing the system or abusing the camping spots, not picking up off after themselves. So the point where I'm leading with this is Leave no trace. Pack in what you pack out or pack out what you pack in. There, got it. Man, just watching this video, I am looking forward to getting back out in that tent. And here we go, the planner, four kilowatt portable diesel heater. You know, I've had this thing for three years here and I beat the heck out of this thing. Absolutely love this heater. Now, as I'm pointing here, I am running, anytime you get above higher elevation or in colder temperatures, you want to either run it on kerosene or add kerosene to your diesel because diesel will gel and the kerosene does burn uh, cleaner at higher elevation.
Now, I've said this many times over and over again. Uh, if you, whatever you're using for your 12 volt source in your diesel heater, if you're going to use one, make sure nobody, it's in a spot where nobody's going to trip it over or accidentally unplug it. If you're plugging the diesel heater into a battery bank of some sort, make sure you have enough power to run that thing overnight. Because that will, if that power cuts off or somebody accidentally unplugs it, that can harm the diesel heater. Shabu, I just said that. And that's one of the things I do want to point out why I brought the planner heater along with this particular trip to, to test out with this tent here is you see Tents like my RBM Outdoor. It has an outer wall and has an inner wall. So the thermal properties with that tent, while it's about the same volume size of you know, interior space as this one, that has much better thermal properties than this particular tent right here. So it takes requires less energy, less heat to keep that tent warm. This one, on the other hand, it is it's about the same size, but it's a single wall tent. So this was part of, hey, let's see if the if the planner can heat this thing or am I going to have to come up with a plan B? Now, worth noting here as well, the plan B is there's a fireplace or I'm sorry, you have a spot for a wood stove in here, but I am i don't have it in this particular video because I don't I didn't have the proper elbow uh, that I needed to put the uh, the the, uh, the pipe out the uh, out the side of it. And speaking of thermal properties, in a moment, you're going to see me close off the windows up on the top here. The temperature was something like 61 degrees inside the tent. And the moment I closed off the back windows, the top, and I think the back windows there, it moved it up to 64 degrees in there. And that just goes to show a little, little added protection over the windows there really does have a big impact on how much of that heat is able to stay inside the tent. And as you see me closing this thing up here, it's just testament to just a little added layer over those windows there. Again, it was 61 degrees in there, and all I'm doing is I'm just closing up basically one side of the tent, or closing up, putting the curtains down, or the window covers over the windows, and it takes it from 61 up to 64 degrees inside the thing. Now, the one thing I do want to ask the folks over at Soma's uh, is right above the door on each side, there's a vent there. Now, that vent has a flap on the outside that comes down, and there's like a little arm that comes out with a Velcro that allows some air circulation in there. The only question I have on this tent is those vent ports right there, because there's no way, like the windows or any of these other things, that you can close that off or completely close that off. Now, the wind wasn't blowing here, but I'm curious if the wind was blowing, does that force air up in? Now I get the reason why it's there because again, most people are gonna heat this tent with a wood stove of some sort. So that allows plenty of ventilation and I'm sure also helps with possible condensation in the tent as well. Now here's one of the new additions. 
This is a new kitchen pack that I put together. Uh, the outer uh, case is from REI. And the two yellow cases you're going to see me pulling out, there's one right there. They were on sale for like 20 some odd bucks. They were it's almost like 40% off or something like that. $29. There we go. Absolutely fantastic. I'm able to fit a zillion freeze-dried meals in here. Uh, I have my jet boil, a pack of paper towels. I have pam, cooking spray, pots, pans, all sorts of stuff. So this is a perfect grab-and-go kitchen uh, setup for my ground tent camping. You know, versus when I go out in my Turtleback Expedition trailer, all that stuff is packed away inside there nice and neat. So this gives me a little bit of some organization for the ground tents. Now, if I can just stop being indecisive and figure out what the hell I'm going to eat. Watching this, I know what I am going to eat, but it's funny as I'm watching this, I'm like, boy, I really spent some time trying to figure out. But I have a ton of choices there in my defense. Boom. I know exactly what I'm going to go for. Incidentally, you're going to see me here. It's the Peak Refuel Coconut Curry. Look, if you've not had freeze-dried meals before, I would highly encourage you. Now, I've started doing about two months ago reviews of freeze-dried meals because uh, we get a lot of questions. And, you know, it's funny because freeze-dried meals are, like, are, are very personal. Or, I mean, meals in general are very personal. Well, I like might necessarily not like or vice versa uh, but these free fried meals have gotten really really fantastic and it's funny because years back when I first started getting into overlanding I loved cooking was half the fun for getting out there and cooking and I'm not saying that has changed I mean, it's, it is it is there's been a slight pivot uh, I cook a lot more these meals were originally meant to be in case of emergency break glass but you'll notice quite often when I go heading out I love these meals because they're, they're really, fan they're, the flavors are absolutely fantastic. And this coconut curry right here is a food group on its own. Peak Refuel does a good job with uh, with this one. And then also breakfast, they have amazing biscuits and gravy. And also worth noting while you're watching me cook this up here, uh, if you're feeling adventurous and want to explore some, uh, some uh, camping meals, there's another company called uh, Good To Go. They have this uh, Cuban rice dish. Oh my goodness, absolutely. It's technically not a freeze-dried meal. It's a dehydrated meal. So they're basically pulling less water out of it. And unlike meals like this, you know, a meal like this is seeing all the ingredients for the first time and cooking for the first time as I'm adding the hot water to it. Uh, Good To Go, like this crew, uh, Cuban rice dish that I was referring to, and again, I'll put links down below to some of these reviews on these meals that I've done. But that one, they actually cook it in small batches and then they dehydrate it. So the flavor is much more balanced and fused into every single bite. But I'm not, the coconut curry here is absolutely to die for. Well, it's not a brand new addition. The Outdoor Vitals, uh, the sleeping bags here. Man, again, for this winter season, yeah, they are new. Uh, it's this down comforter material, and it is amazing. One of the things that I hate, yeah, I, you know, I think, you know, it's rough. One of the things that I dislike about camping, and I think many might be able to agree with me, is packing up, especially sleeping bags. Sleeping bags never fit into the bags. I was complaining about the, uh, the, the tent bags a moment ago in the beginning of this video. Well, sleeping bags takes it to a whole nother level because they very rarely fit in. These things right here, as you can see, that sleep, that comforter that I'm going to be using is about the size of a small watermelon. And I'm telling you, that thing is so warm. It is so comfortable. And it is extremely lightweight. It was the most comfortable night of sleep I've ever had camping. I don't say that lightly, folks. It, this was hands down so darn, it was amazing. But there you go. So this tent, 
Huge home run. Absolutely love it. I'm looking forward to getting out there and you're going to be seeing a lot more content relating to this particular tent. Now, also what I've done here is I set up another channel earlier this week called the Silent Overlander. So if listening to me is not your thing, which, hey, I'm okay with that. I uh, set up another channel where it's, I don't say anything. You're just going to watch me. Um, you're going to hear the sounds of nature and voila, you still get entertained. Now, also one thing I do want to point out here, one of the final items that I did test here on this particular trip, a buddy of mine came up uh, shortly or actually later on that evening uh, and with his turtleback uh, trailer and I let him use the uh, H calorie uh it was supposed to have been an eight kilowatt diesel heater, ended up being a five kilowatt. And so this was the first time running that thing. And of course, I have a whole nother review on that uh, that I will put on the page here. So if you guys are on the fence about getting a diesel heater, I will I have a lot of videos that I've done. I've done a lot of reviews on diesel heaters. And I will say this is one of those items that you definitely want to flex your budget because case in point, over the years, I've tested it's either four or five Chinese diesel heaters, and they all end up the same. They, they they just don't, there's always, they're so problematic, they're loud, they don't run right, and each one of those has died on me. A couple of them died on the first night. This one right here, uh, 1 a.m., well, first off, by the time we got the thing started, uh, it we had a few error codes, and it took three times to get the thing started. Now, I will give this company credit. Their app is actually pretty cool, but... The following morning, as I'm uh, getting up and kind of, uh, I started noticing, I'm like, I don't hear the diesel heater in my buddy's tent. Uh, and uh, when he woke up, I asked him and he told me at 1 a.m. in the morning, the thing just shut off. It was 13 degrees. That is stinking cold. And this is testament to what I was saying, This whole the whole premise of this video. Get out there and test your, if you have new gear, get out there and test it. Make sure it works. Make sure it's reliable. So therefore, if you're heading out when it's snowing, raining, crazy weather, whatever the case may be, you're not out there trying to find a plan B during these incremental or these inclement weather periods. But anyway, friends, Hey, that's it for this video. So I'm going to be shutting up this camera. You get out there, stay healthy, and uh, find your adventure.